Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Emmy Kirshner. On today's show and for the next couple of weeks, we're going to mix things up a little bit and we're going to have different people interviewing me. So this show, we have Karen Cooley, who's one of the members in the Tribe of Leaders Biz School, interviewing me and asking the questions that everybody seems to want to know and haven't found out yet. Super excited about it. I had a ton of fun with her. And if you love this show or any of the other shows you've listened to, do me a super important favor and share it with somebody that you know. My name is Emmy Kirshner. I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor. The one thing that I get asked all the time is, how do you achieve success in business and make an impact? In each episode of the Tribe of Leaders podcast, you'll hear from entrepreneurs and visionaries who share how their leadership has changed not only their lives, but the lives of everybody around them. Emmy, welcome to the show. Thank you. I am so excited to be here on the other end of the microphone today. I'm excited to be on this side of things because I get to interrogate you. I mean, interview you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Ask the questions that everybody wants to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Inside Emmy's brain. Oh, it's a crazy place. But lots of sparkles and glitter. Lots of sparkles. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'm just going to dive in. Okay. Because everybody's curious. So what led you to become a business coach? Sure. So that was the most unexpected and yet very organic experience I've probably ever had in that I started my business as a health coach. Um, I have always loved healthy eating. I'm passionate about people living their best self. And I still am. And it was probably like four years ago, I woke up and I was like, I don't want to have to write another blog about the five things that you should eat right now. It doesn't resonate (laughs) with me. And if I have to do that anymore, I'm going to throw up. That's probably not a good thing for a health coach to feel. Right? (laughs) Or anybody in their business, like you're not excited about the thing that you're supposed to do. And I started looking at, well, what am I going to do about that? That's always a good question. <laughs> right. And then it was, oh, well, let me look at my client. It's my, when I'm marketing and when I'm, you know, looking at growing, I'm always looking at who am I serving right now and how am I serving them? And I wasn't really health coaching. I was doing a lot of stress management, mm. but I was already working with entrepreneurs and I realized that the stress management and some of the eating habits was really the symptom of my business isn't doing well. And I had already started That's helping them with sales and marketing strategies. With your health coaching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. I did so, not know all of that before. Yeah. So that's really interesting. And my background is so varied from, you know, catering and personal chefing and understanding the sales behind that to event planning and convention conference planning, to working for a marketing agency, financial services. Oh, I was going to say, everything was very creative up until you got to financial services. Right. (laughs) (laughs) How does that play into this? It's still, yeah, it's still, and what I'm really passionate about is people who want to help other people. And most financial services, um, you know, advisors, they want to help other people. They want to make a difference with your money and they want people to be abundant right? and have the resources that they need. That makes sense. That all ties in. And I love money. So, you know, I think everybody does. Right. So if I could make a lot of money while people were were making money, um, that was great. But what I found out that where I was just age wise, I was still in my twenties at that point. And the industry, the way I perceive it to have been, and the, the place that I was working just didn't align for me. Mm. So I switched um, things up. But mm. they have all contributed to my ability to help people now. Which is awesome. Yeah. And then, okay, so with your coaching, I feel like a lot of the people that you're helping are creatives just like you. Is that true? Or do you? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody that I work with, and not necessarily like an artist, right? but they have a more creative brain. Absolutely. They're not left brain dominant. They're not you know, strictly logical mm-hmm. speaking. And, and obviously we have both pieces in us, but right. But the, I think the really key thing is, is not only are they creative, they're really passionate, as what I said before, about helping other people. They're really mm-hmm. passionate about making a difference. And they started their business because of that 
not because I wanted to run a business. Right. And those are two totally different things. Oh, they are. So I get to help them learn to love running the business. And I feel like like attracts like, yeah. and you're very creative. And I think that you're just attracting all of these other people that also are super creative minded, mm-hmm. whether they're, you know, a chef or a graphic designer or a photographer, or a hairdresser, whatever it might be. It's definitely, it doesn't have to be an art form per se. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's very awesome. Well, speaking of creativity, you have a lot of creativity in the kitchen. <laughs> So can you tell us a little bit about your background, how you got to be so, well, such an amazing chef, I should Sure. Say. Thank you. Yes. So my initial foray into cooking started because, and I think I was in like fourth or fifth grade. Like <laughs> Very young chef. <laughs> and I wasn't really cooking so much as I was bored of whatever it was my mom was making on a regular basis. And I wanted to do things differently. <laughs> So she was like, fine. She's like, I don't have time to look for new recipes. So that you do it, right? <laughs> so you do it. So I found okay. some. And I think we probably cooked together, but primarily she still cooked. Okay. And I mean, that's kind of like, says a lot about who I am in that I want a lot of interaction and engagement and I want things to be mixed up. Mixed up. I'm not the same old, same old person. No. Right? That's so, true. Yeah. And that's a, a very good way. <laughs> However anybody wants to take it. <laughs> I I take it in a very good way. Um, And then kind of fast forward into my 20s, um, very early 20s, and I got really tired of having what I refer to as slab of overcooked chicken and frozen vegetables because that's what I – like kind of what I knew how to really like cook. Right. So a friend of mine was making stuff. We started sharing recipes, and I just started cooking. And then I started – because my ex-husband had gotten laid off, I started catering. And the catering led to Ah. me cooking even more because they had some amazing chefs at this catering uh, company up in Massachusetts. So my guess is that you kind of learned from them as well. and Yeah. So there was, I mean, like hours and years of playing in the kitchen and just starting. That sounds amazing and fun. (laughs) It was, but sometimes dinner took like two hours, but it should have only taken like 30 minutes (laughs) because I was slow. Like I didn't know how to use a knife properly. Yeah. yeah. But I I started. soon became the person who did all the family events. And then I started doing other people's family events and I was a personal chef. And today you've started the community table this past year, right? Where you gather people. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. So this is my almost monthly live event and it really came um, to fruition last year right about this time because I saw a need for people wanting to connect And not just in another networking environment, not with another... only so many that you can go to. Right. Well, and here in Philly, we have an overabundance of networking groups. And I mean, I haven't been to all of them, obviously, but they're all great. They all serve people. There's nothing like wrong or bad or like they're fine. Right. But I feel like we don't need another one for me. Yeah. And, And particularly here in Philly, and I know it's different in other parts of the country, but those networking groups, like you can be overwhelmed with like three times a day, seven days a week, 365 a year, and still not go to all of them. And still not have time to work on your business because you're going yeah. to all of these events anyhow. And then marry that with, I would kind of stopped cooking over the last several years because my kids are teenagers, they're older, you know, our schedule was crazy. And not a lot of dinners around the family table. Yeah. 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 I mean, what they, I get that. <laughs> they grew up with had just stopped. It didn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. And I missed, and they could also, they don't care about my rustic chicken and and polenta. <laughs> they don't care about the I thing I spent about, about three hours. Though. <laughs> right. So I wanted to be able to marry my desire to cook and my my love of entertaining with creating deeper, more meaningful relationships that still lead to business. Right. So that's what began. I did the last one this January, 2019 or the, yeah, I did the first one that whatever, uh, 2019. And it's been a growing and super fun experience since then. And definitely we're going to be doing been. vision boarding in December. So Which you, I am looking forward to. Yeah. So that's going to be a lot of fun and I'm going to keep doing them. And really what I'd love to see is to be able to have these events in other cities, other states, and maybe whoever's leading them doesn't cook, maybe it gets catered, maybe it's in a restaurant, but it's still about having the relationships, great, the relationship and great right. food. Yeah. 
not just the buffet, you know, of like chicken piccata. There's like the same right. stuff that you see, but something that's different, that's interesting, that can bind people. Uh, one of the things that I said, uh, I used to say as a health coach, and I still believe, and when you start thinking about it, is that um, all of our cultural traditions from birth to death revolve around food. They do. Everything revolves around food. Right? And everything about food, to me, has meaning because it creates life. Right. Right? You can be exceptionally healthy or exceptionally unwell just by what you eat. Very true. And because I really, you want to focus on how do we create the most energy, having good food that's good quality, and the conversation is... And it just naturally builds those relationships because you're bringing everyone together, you're communing over the food, and just chatting, not just about business, but about life and where you're from, who you are as a person, not just here, take my card, which you get at a lot of the networking Mm -hmm. events sadly well and even beyond that like i've had some you know minimal conversation like five minutes or whatever with some people that i would love to know more about but they don't really fit into necessarily my box of what i'm looking for for a business partner a lead some sort of relationship and i don't necessarily always follow up with them and 90 percent of people don't follow up with whoever they spoke to or got their card from that's a big number right yeah yeah so this gives people a very intimate setting because there's you know between twelve and fifteen people, mm-hmm. and where business still gets talked about, but in having you know we would do the topic of the month's conversation and having that you get the different perspectives, and there's something I think very unifying about that. Oh, like you there feel closer was. to those people, and you're more likely to reach out to them well, for a project or whatever. The past community table. I mean, you had asked us about impact and. The ideas that were bouncing around were pretty much consistent. Everyone really was saying the same thing in a different way. Mm -hmm. And then the conversation just really flowed from one person to another. And it was, it was fantastic because you don't get that kind of feel at a networking event. It's just very brief. How are you? Let's, let's connect over coffee sometime. Yeah. But this one, it was just, it was so great to be a part of it and really. I guess acknowledge other people and how they feel too. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Thank you. I'm really excited because each conversation topic for me is about having people be more intentional with what they're doing. Right. And I think impact right now is kind of overused, as I said then. Right. So what does that really mean for us? And it doesn't have to mean the same thing. And that's what I love is that there is the variation and our approach can be totally different, but we're now more intentional about how we're going to do that and what that can look like and what the possibility is for us to expand our reach right? to make shifts in the world. Absolutely. So, yeah. So the other thing about the community table is I feel like it leads in and ties in very well with your Facebook group, Tribal Leaders. I feel like we have the same type of community mm-hmm. there, not face-to-face, but at least we've met face-to-face perhaps at the community table And we can continue building the relationships there and then have you inspire us as well almost every day. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's what I wanted to grow um, in general. Like that's my my purpose is I want to be able to help entrepreneurs make more money. And I want them to be able to make more money so that they can help other people. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's how we're going to create world change. So it's, you know, it's really getting down into that grassroots nitty gritty to have this huge world picture. And I, I think that in the next five to 10 years, we're going to see, because I'm not the only one doing this, this is just my version. Right. We're going to see a tidal wave of shift that I think we can radically change how the world looks at, let's go with peace, but because that's my, my ultimate goal. But, but I think it, we're going to look at one another differently with less fear, less discrimination, and more openness and connectivity. I know. I would love to see that happen. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's my awesome. my huge goal. I love it. All um, right, well then, how about we narrow down that goal and what yeah. are you looking forward to for 2020? It's coming up. Got so many things. You know, it's um, perfect vision <laughs> 2020, so. Right? Thank God I have my contacts in, so it really is 2020. <laughs> um, but 
A couple of different things. One is growing this podcast. Like I really want to be able to, you know, grow the number of subscribers and mm-hmm. downloads because I think some of the stories that are being told are so fabulous outside of my own. Oh uh, yeah. They right. Have been. That, that are so cool. And I want people to hear them because I want them to hear that the challenges and the struggles and the successes that my, you know, the people that are on the, on the podcast are experiencing are the same ones that you have. We're not alone. Right. Absolutely yeah. not alone. So that's one of my big missions. I'm going to host my first one day mastermind. Um, and I'd love to have a hundred people in the room in March. That would be so exciting. Yeah. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. I've wanted to do this. It's been on my bucket list for like four years. So that's going to happen. Pretty incredible. So that will be in March, hopefully. Yeah. And then I'm going to, I'm going to take the tribal leaders on the road. I think that'll be fall. Oh yeah. So where, you know, where can we bring and broaden our circle of people Right. Um, and you know, what, what cities do we go play with next? That's exciting. Yeah. So those are kind of my yeah goals for next year. Okay. Well then let's deep dive into goals. Okay. Next five to 10 years. What do you envision <laughs> for the biz school and tribe of leaders and Emmy? Yeah. So, um, for me personally, it's traveling. Like I want to be able to create and I'm, I'm halfway there right now, but a business so I can work from anywhere. And I really want to spend it's a very nice goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the best part of being a freedom nester. <laughs> <laughs> Kids are gone. I can do whatever I want within reason. Exactly. Um, but I want to see the world because I think having the experience of different cultures, people, thoughts will broaden my perspective of how I can serve people. And help your grassroots movement. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I'd love to be able to speak more. My a couple Ooh. of five to ten, like do a TEDx talk, be it um, on the stage, the main stage. Oh, of the- you would be amazing for a TEDx talk. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, but I want to be on the main stage of the Pennsylvania Women's Conference in front of ten thousand women. <sighs> yeah, oh, I that's would- a lofty goal. I love it. That'd be so much fun. And I would be shrinking behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, a couple hundred, ten thousand. It's all good. You could handle it for sure. It's just practice. Exactly. Um, But I'd really like to see like in the next year, our membership get up to 500 people in Mm -hmm. the biz school and then just grow it from there to whatever is sustainable Mm -hmm. so that it works for everybody because I want to have the same relationships and accountability in like little groups. So It wouldn't be the same if you didn't have that little touch with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So I, at some point, I'll bring on other coaches to help maintain that because mm-hmm. I can't grow effectively and scale effectively if I don't have support. Right. So one of the things I'm starting to look at is what do those coaches look like? Like what skills do they need? How do they, we all balance each other? I was just going to say, we need to find people that can help balance what yeah. you have. Yeah. And uh, you'll need some different personalities to make sure everyone fits in together trying to figure out how to say that, but I can't think of it. <laughs> that's <laughs> it's okay. Monday. I probably still need more coffee. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So that's kind of what I'm thinking the next like five to 10 years. So. That would be amazing. Yeah. Wow, I wish you all of the best. Thank you. That's so cool. Yeah. That'll be fun. I'm trying to think of any more questions for you. But I think we covered a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you have anything else that you would like to add? Well, you know what I would love is for you to share, because you are in the biz school right now. Yes. uh, What your experience is and how it's helped you. Uh, I think my favorite thing right now. uh, Oh, okay. Either the co-working days or your teaching days. Because actually maybe both, because I love how during the teaching moments that you know, when you're sharing with us, um, I've learned a lot from that, but then the co-working day kind of ties in with that. So it sinks in even more and helps push me a little bit further than what I thought I could do. Okay. I think that's one of my favorite things are those two. Um, but I love how you have everything up there ready to grab, like here, watch this video. It's there. If you miss it, um, just the resources that you have on there right now. Okay, it's been cool. really good. And just having you around. <laughs> it's, just, it's my favorite thing. Aww. 
There you go. So everybody should come in and and invite, well, I invite them, but into the biz school because we are going to be doing um, a relaunch and opening membership up in January. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's coming up. So um, so come play with us. Come Come play. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to do like a 30 day free trial for people. So well, that'd be good. You can you can come and hang out and do the training and the co working and see, see if it works it, for you yeah. and really get your feet wet with the resources resources that are in there. Right. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited about it. I have a couple uh, of new tribe mentors that are going to be starting. Oh, I'm excited for that. Yeah, yeah. One in Any finance. Hints? Hmm? Any hints about who might be coming in? Um, one in finance. Okay. And I'm going to leave the other one. A mystery. A mystery right oh, now. I have to wait until January? Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess I'll be satisfied with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. I can't wait. No, oh, it's going to be lots of fun. Yeah. So, this was so much fun. I'm so glad that, yes. that you uh, wanted to interview me. I did. I did. I mean, I've... You were always talking about everybody else, getting us all to talk to you and open up to you. Right. So it was kind of fun getting to hear a little bit Mm -hmm. behind uh, the facade. (laughs) (laughs) And the glitter, yes. Well, thank you so much for doing that. Thank you. Yeah. It was fun. Awesome. Yay. Yay. (laughs) As an entrepreneur, do you ever feel isolated, like you're just grinding away and not getting to the place or reaching the goals that you want? Maybe you've realized that you just spent days, weeks, or even months trying to accomplish something only to figure out that the answer that you have would have saved you all of that time. I know I've had that experience and my clients have as well. And that's why I created the Tribe of Leaders Biz School. Get the accountability, the training, and the knowledge base in a community of like-minded people who are there to support you. Go ahead and check it out. It's the tribe of leaders.com.